Welcome or welcome back on Watch Advisor on YouTube with me, Alexander, your host for another hands-on video. And on your screen, you have the A Lange und Söhne, Lange Eins Time Zone, or as we say in German, Zeitzone. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. And in case you're doing this for the first time, you have the chance to win one of the Bose noise cancelling headsets each month we're giving away one of them. Take your opportunity and win the Bose noise cancelling headsets. It would be presumptuous calling this a world premiere. Now that's going too far for me. This is a watch that Lange and Söhne presented in 2005, meaning 15 years ago. And the version, the 2020 version, the version that we have on or that you have on your screen is of course a new watch in terms of it has been modernized, we have a new movement, we have some new technical features and we have some enhancements in readability on the dial, but I wouldn't call it a world premiere. Also before starting the video, I quickly want to jump into Lange und Söhne and explain a little bit about the brand. It is always when we talk about Lange and Söhne, people come out and say, how can we compare it to Patek Philippe? Is it better? Is it worse than Patek Philippe? Is it worth more money, less or whatsoever? Um, let me bring it to the point. Um, you cannot compare A Lange und Söhne to any other brand at all. It's unique. What Lange und Söhne in Glashütte is doing is simply unique in many reasons. The quantities Lange und Söhne is manufacturing per year is limited to about 6,000 watches. Comparing Patek Philippe to it, 60,000, 60,000 watches, so 10 times more watches. So Lange is much more exclusive. And the way Lange is doing its watches in terms of design, in terms of movements is unique. You have the typical three quarter plates that are a hallmark of the watches being manufactured and produced in Glashütte since the early days when the brand was founded. You always have this legendary hand engraved balance cock and you have many more features. The movement is made out of German silver. The movements are completely assembled twice. So it is there are so many aspects that do distinguish Lange and Zöne from all the other brands. You cannot compare it to Brugge. Brugge is a typical brand, has its own features as Patek Philippe has. So keep it the way that Lange is Lange. Don't compare it and just take it as one of the top, top brands of the universe of watchmaking being located or being not based in Switzerland, but in Germany and manufacturing some really incredible, exclusive and beautiful wristwatches. The novelty of the new Time Zone watch, the Lange 1 Time Zone watch is on your screen now. It is the new Calibre 141L, 141.1 and uh, all models of the Lange 1 watch family that were originally based on the Calibre L901 that was the movement being used so far and also the uh, Lange 1 time zone that you were used to see or that was uh, sold so far had the 901 or was based on a 901. So the most recent Calibre reflects, reflects uh, the experience around uh, with uh, the development of 65 Calibres meanwhile. So Lange has been manufacturing or developing and manufacturing, not 65, but developing 65 calibers and manufacturing of course, many more of them. <laughs> um, in uh, comparison with the uh, predecessor model, the 72 hours of power reserve now are achieved with only one spring barrel. The watch before or the, uh, based on a 901 had, an, had a double barrel all called Doppelfederhaus and it was clearly marked on the dial and I will show you that now you see on the dial where formerly it was written Doppelfederhaus, it's marked 72 hours of power reserve or in German 72 Stunden Gangreserve. So one spring barrel and the one essential also technical detail includes a classic screw balance and a freely oscillating balance spring crafted in-house 
Um, meaning that Lange und Söhne is uh, manufacturing its own balance springs. And um, this balance spring has been designed and calibrated for a frequency of 21,600 semi-oscillations per hour or 3 Hertz. So this is the new screw balance and you see the beautiful already before I talked about that beautifully hand engraved balance cock. So admire for a while I'm uh, leaving the picture. I'm not saying very much. Admire this beauty. This is the new Caliber L141.1. Alexander, I know that you are admiring what I'm showing you, so I try not to talk too much. Beautiful. Turning around the watch again. Um, and now, first of all, let me show what I have just been mentioning. This is, you see, it's mentioned here, Gang Reserve 72 Stunden, meaning power reserve 72 hours. And those who know the Lange 1 time zone, of course, remember that before there was written Doppel Federhaus exactly here. So, one new feature also mentioned on the dial, then we still have the same um, order or let's say the same design of the dial. Nothing has particularly changed. I will quickly run you through what we see. This is the legendary big date indication of Lange, um, composed of two discs. One disc showing a 0, 1, 2, 3 and here we have from 0 to 9 and composing our date from the 1st to the 31st. Then we have the legendary or the typical power reserve indication auf und ab, up and down. Up means empty, auf means full. So we are, let's say, um, since the watch has 72 hours of power reserve, we have uh, still a power reserve of about 36 hours. I was, uh, I let the watch run for a while to be able to show you when I will wind it later how the hand will move up to the position of auf, showing you that it is now fully wound. You have the running second here. We have the main time or the local time indicating 10 past 10. This, uh, you know me now, I'm setting those watches always to 10 past 10 to make them smile at you. Um, and uh, at position of uh, 5 o'clock there is the travel time, also showing 10 past 10, because the watch synchronized um, with the um, 24 hour um, day, uh, disc showing um, names of cities in 24 hour time zones. And this is what the watch is able to show. The watch is able to show you the time in 24 hour time zones. The watch does not show any half an hour deviations or three quarter of an hour deviations. Only one hour deviations are being shown when you manipulate the watch to indicate the zone time in an another time zone. So this little dial is the travel time. And what is new? You have this arrow. You can see it clearly here, an arrow, and there's a red little dot in it. And if the red dot appears, it is likely, or not likely, it is the case that the time zone also has a daylight saving time. So indicated here is Berlin. You could also have been, uh, there could also be put that, they could also have be, been putting, oh my goodness, they have, they could also have been putting Paris over there or uh, whatsoever, but they are German. So it is Berlin representing our time zone. Um, and you see, it is Berlin has a red dot, meaning that we have a daylight saving time, of course. And I would then show you when I operate and manipulate the watch that there are time zones where you have no red dot, indicating you that there is no daylight saving time. And in case you are uh, using the watch, this would give you a hint that you probably have to correct or add another hour of time. And what is also absolutely new is that the formerly um, both indications of day and night, they have been separately here somewhere on the dial, little dial, a little sub dial. 
and they were showing if the 12 hour the 12 hour clock is showing day or night this is now integrated and you can see it clearly there's a blue a blue part of it also here a blue part of it and the dials are showing 10 past 10 and they are clearly not in the blue zone this is obvious that we are showing a, a, a time during day and not night the same applies here there is that blue half and the blue half is not underneath the hour hand so it is absolutely logical and um, that the word the time shown on both of the clocks is a time during day before we are really going into details and we are going to set a time a local time and then show how we travel with the watch next thing i want to do is uh, by keeping the watch or the dial of the watch as close as my Sony camera can handle it on your screen and I will show you how the different um, indications, dials, etc. look like when they are being manipulated. So what I'm doing now, there is a push piece here at 8 o'clock and when I push it you will see the date disk with those 24 different cities in 24 different time zones will move and we are going to jump from Berlin to Beirut next and then to Riyadh to Dubai we are going to Karachi, Alamati, Bangkok, Hong Kong, Tokyo then we are going to Sydney and so on Murea Auckland, Midway, Honolulu, Los Angeles, Denver, Mexico, New York, and so on. Can you hear the clicking? It's a very solid, very, let's say, noble sound when I am pressing that button. We have been, uh, we come, we are we're coming back once around the world. Um, uh, and we are heading back through the Azores over London, UTC or GMT, indicated clearly back to Berlin. Let me quickly um, try to record the sound of that clicking once again. Solid, huh? What would you say? I would say very solid. Doesn't... Ah! Tuck. I love it. Yes. Okay. So, let's come back. Flying over the Atlantic. Buenos Aires. South Georgia. That's that little island in the uh, south. Um, parallel to um, the coast of Argentina. Then the Azores. London. And we land back in Berlin. So... Okay, next thing I'll show you, the push piece at 10 o'clock will manipulate the big date, here, big date. So watch carefully what happens and you will see, let me move the gloves, it's always a little bit, there we go, the 19th and now 20, you can see both discs, chuck, 2-0, now I will run you. 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then watch again. The three to uh, the, the disc will change from 2 to 3. Attention. There we go. So now the 31st. And then that blank disc will appear. Attention. There we go. So we start again. 1, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Once again, the one will show up now. Attention. There it is. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Attention. 20. There you are. 21, 22nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th. And 28. There we are back. 
Voila. So, um, now what about winding the watch? Um, good idea, I think. Um, I'm not sure if I can do this uh, with the gloves and I, I should be able to do it. It's not easy. You, you can't touch those watches. You can't really touch, you see. First, I wanted to show you how the hands move around. There you go. You can see they are, they are synchronized, of course, because the minutes do not change. Voila. So, and now by closing the crown again, I will start winding and we will see this hand moving slowly up. Watch. It's not easy with gloves, believe me. But touching such a watch with such a polished surface with your fingers will uh, quickly lead to fingerprints and a uh, oh, greasy surface and that's, that does not look good. You see, I have been winding the barrel, single barrel now. The Doppelfederhaus is uh, past, is the past. There is no more Doppelfederhaus or double barrel. There's one single barrel. As just mentioned before, this is why they are indicating now instead of Doppelfederhaus here, Gangreserve, 72 Stunden, meaning power reserve, 72 hours. And once again, uh, with the gloves, not an, not an easy exercise, but there you go, you see, clearly moving towards up, up in English or auf in German, up is down, this is the power reserve of the Lange Eins Time Zone Watch. Next we're doing is traveling to New York, a classic to show a time zone watch or the functionality of a time zone watch, six hours of difference, no big deal. Um, but I'm using the occasion of traveling to New York to show you something else that's pretty interesting. Um, first of all, when I press the button to change uh, the time zones, we're always traveling east, meaning that we are going to come over Tokyo. And Tokyo actually does not have a daylight saving time. So we will see that the little red arrow that is now here, clearly visible, will not be there. And this might be a hint for us that there is something wrong. So watch carefully. And we're starting off. We're traveling east. Um, it will be more easy if uh, the watch would feature another button to also travel west because, of course, um, New York is not far away. It's here. Here we have New York. This is us. Oh, I'm sorry. I still have to go to Berlin. There we are. Berlin. So we are in Berlin, actually. And... Um, as I just said to you, uh, Berlin, we should only, if we could go west, but we can't. There is New York, but now we have to make the tour around the world to get to New York. I have been setting the watch to the actual time, and it is, as you can see, 20 to 4 or 15.39. This is the actual time here in Vienna, where I am. And I will start my journey. Watch carefully. We are f going no. And we are arriving in Tokyo. Do you see Tokyo? What we see, the field is white. The red, uh, the red indication has disappeared. It's white. And the watch is showing, or the clock on the watch is showing 11.40. But attention, I have uh, my iPhone that is now showing something different. And you can see Tokyo is uh, 10.39 and not 11.39. So clearly there's a difference of seven hours. This is due to the fact that they do not have a daylight saving time. And this is what uh, this little red dot is for, alerting you, attention, please. It could be wrong what the watch shows. So you would have to readjust it to show the correct time here. And um, 
This is why Lange has added this daylight saving time feature um, to the new Lange 1 time zone. So now let's continue our little flight around the world. So we're going to New York. New York, New York, I'm coming. Los Angeles, we have reached the United States of America, Denver, Mexico. And here we are in Los Angeles, ah, in New York. So once again, we see the red um, indication has appeared again in the arrow. So daylight saving time applies. Six hours of different, uh, six hours of difference apply as well. 4 o'clock, 10 o'clock, very easy. And we see that this little new feature might be helpful if you are traveling and if you're not aware if uh, an area in the world um, has daylight saving time or not. So, okay, um, I'm going back. Yeah, easy. You see? 3.40, there we go. Very easy and yeah, no big deal. Easy to read, 20 to 10, 20 to 4, 6 hours. Logical and of course, um, yeah, everything is during day because you can see the blue field, the hand, the, mid, uh, the hour hand is still away from the blue field. We are approaching here because in two hours this hand will then be over the blue field or the blue field will be underneath of it and this would show us attention that this clock on the Lange Eins time zone now is showing a time at night or in the night or getting in the night. The big day dedication of the Lange Eins time zone or Zeitzone is linked to the main dial. And I want to show you how this looks like when the date is changing. And I just explained to you before, we are, it's four o'clock, some minutes or before and you will see now the hand I explained that just before now moving in the blue zone and indicating that we are going into the night and when we are reaching about midnight you will see the date jumping to the 29th so let's start and there we go and you can see now as I just said before underneath is blue or above the uh, hand, the our hand is above the blue zone or the blue zone is underneath of it as you want to see it and uh, we are coming to midnight and there you go it's the 8 already is slightly moving the 29th there you are so now um, a good question is what happens if you arrive to a city and you stay there longer can you swap time zones or can you swap the times yes you can and this is what i'm going to show you next but before doing this um, i uh, forgot to show you something um, uh, an important feature uh, when uh, we are going over midnight and the date is changing as it is doing right now to the 30th because I've just been changing from the 28th to the 29th and you have to readjust the watch or you want to readjust the watch you are not harming or destroying the watch by going back but the watch is not able or the date discs are not able to go back but you will see that there is a kind of a security you just saw it a security that protects the mechanism protects the mechanism you can't harm it by going back but it is not able or the watch does not have a feature when you turn it back that from the 29th to the 30th it will then go back from the 30th to the 29th you will have to do an adjustment through the push piece at 10 o'clock what is next um, is the feature that the Lange 1 time zone also has. Uh, if you want to change or swap time zones or if you need to regulate the watch for any purpose or you need to set the times, uh, the indicated times differently as you want, the watch has the following feature. You have the push piece here. There it is. At 8 o'clock and if you press it, in a certain, um, let's say, not you 
don't press it completely as if you would want to change the time zone. But if you go a little bit in there, you will see now, I think you can clearly see it, that the hour hand is no longer moving on this dial. So the hour hand here is moving, you can see it clearly, but the hour hand on the small dial is no longer moving and this enables you to completely desynchronize, synchronize, resynchronize, whatever you want to do with the watch. It's by applying gently on the push piece and then you will be able to set the watch or to swap time zones uh, at your purpose and it's easy done. Once again, I'm pressing on the push piece and then you see, yes. The hour end does no longer move. Now comes the fun part, that's the real beauty of the watch for those of you like me who really love mechanical watchmaking. Um, in the picture on your screens, the new Lange Movement L141.1 uh, consisting of 448 parts, uh, 38 jewels, um, three screwed gold chatons, there's one uh, gold chaton, there's another gold chaton here. Um, 72 hours of power reserve, I already mentioned a couple of times, you can here see part of the barrel, this is underneath here. Here is the big barrel, there are no longer two barrels, it's only one barrel as I just mentioned before. And what you also should, oh, what, you, what you probably be interested in is the dimensions of the movement, uh, 34.1 millimeters and the height is 6.7 millimeters. So um, interesting also um, to show some of the attention Lange takes when they are building movements. First of all, I have to say every part of the entire movement of those 448 parts is being treated. So even if you don't see the parts, if they are covered by the free quarter plate, every part is being treated and it is not the case that everything that you don't see here, the gear train, other um, technical parts of the movement, that they are not being treated with the same care as the parts you see on the screen. So, um, interesting. Let's go and let me walk you through. Chamfer polish. Here. Here. What is this? Uh, at Lange, the 45 degree edges of almost all movement parts are polished by hand. The sharp angles of inner corners are particularly challenging for the watchmakers doing this. Um, flat polish. This part has been flat polished. It's mirroring, so if you look in there, you can see yourself, believe me. Um, then you have straight graining, ding, ding, ding. these wonderful straps. Um, perlage, uh, underneath here we have the perlage. These are, what is a perlage? Hundreds of small overlapping circles applied by circular graining create this uh, characteristic pattern with which above all bridges and plates are decorated. Underneath here. Yes. Interesting then to see, of course, um, the hand engraved balance cock. Here, hand engraved balance cock. But not only the balance cock is hand engraved, also the cock of the intermediate wheel here is hand engraved. I hope we can see this. I will turn the watch a little bit in different directions for you so you can see what I've been talking about. I think it's very, very good and clearly visible thanks to the images my Sony camera is producing for you. Look, clear. it's mirroring. I've not been joking. This part here. 
on the turn we can see each maybe you can see me there or the camera at least voila interesting um what is this intermediate doing here um i will show this um i will just bring the watch in the position i want it to be so um have a close look here this is the balance wheel oscillating you can clearly see this that the balance wheel is oscillating with uh, 21,600 semi oscillations per hour but there is a little um spring here on top of it if i pull out the crown the spring will tap on the balance wheel and stop it so to set the watch to set the seconds you need to stop the watch and this is done by a little spring you can see it here just above and when i will now pull out the crown what happens um the crown by pulling out the crown the, balance, the spring will tap on it, will stop the balance wheel, and we can manipulate the watch and set the watch. And the intermediate wheel, uh, first of all, as I just mentioned, the cock is beautifully decorated. And the intermediate wheel is uh, distributing the information coming from the gear train to the two dials, here and here. They are on the opposite. And this is what I'm going to show you now. Hopefully it is possible. It's not easy. It's slivery operation Oop, I think we saw it at least on my control screen let me ah, you can see it. I see it and I'm sure I'm sure you can see it let me turn the watch into the light here wait okay here there is that little spring coming on the balance wheel and stopping it wait one moment and you see it starting again attention one last time Okay, and so now the balance wheel stopped. We can clearly see it. I will also turn it. You can see the balance spring. Then in-house balange. Uh, and you can also see the new balance wheel that has now been introduced with the new generation, the L141.1. Going back a little bit, yep. Hoping that you have the best side. And now what happens, um, I am setting the time. And you can clearly see that this intermediate wheel is distributing the information coming from the movement, from the gear train to the dials with these two wheels. There we go. Clearly to see. Oh, look how beautiful. This is art. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, this is so beautiful. Look. Look how nice these wheels are turning from the other side so you can really follow the movement. This is really, oh, I'm getting excited now. Mm, love it. Oh my goodness. Pure watchmaking. Made in Germany. Untreated German silver plates. Three quarter plate. Ah, oh, beautiful. And now watch again how the balance wheel, as soon as I pull the crown in, the little spring tick, will go up and the balance wheel will restart to oscillate. Attention. There we go. Alive. Now oscillating at 21,600. Wow. So nice. So beautiful. Um, what I did not mention, yes, uh, all the, sc all the um, uh, screws are blued by temperature, of course. The blue is not colored, so these screws are heated until the, they turn blue. Um, yes, I hopefully did not forget anything to show you and to explain you, but I must say this is really beautiful. I last time will turn it from left to right and right to left yes please enjoy so beautiful i did not yet give you the exact dimensions of the case the lock to lock distance etc so let me do this um 41.9 millimeters or almost 42 millimeters 41.9 um the 
8 of this white gold version uh, of the Lange 1 Zeitzone time zone, the height of the case is 10.9 millimeters, 10.9, and the so called lug to lug distance, lug to lug distance from here to here is 50 millimeters. The watch is uh, delivered or comes with a nice alligator strap, brown alligator strap, wonderfully executed. You can see Ah, Lange und Söhne here. Ah, Lange und Söhne, Glashütte in Sachsen. And with a, an 18 karat white gold pin buckle. Lange. So nice. There is no superluminova applied on the dial, so um, the typical or uh, yeah, the night shot we always bring, we can't bring it because here, 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 here. No superluminova on this dial. Um, could be a flaw, must not be a flaw. I'm not sure how to, um, how to see it. I would say the way um, this dial looks is so beautiful, so gorgeous. I like this contrast. I like this the, uh, black dial. This is also the reason why I asked them to send me the white gold version and not the red gold version or probably the yellow gold version of the watch. By the way, um, I just said, yeah, the watch exists also in um, pink gold or rose gold or red gold, up to you. And um, in white gold, this is the version of white gold. And there is one edition in yellow gold made, uh, limited to 100 pieces. And this is a special boutique edition. Well, the watch you see in the picture, um, it sold for 49,200 euro, including a 19% VAT, 49,200 40, euro. Um, yeah, that's, and now the last thing, I will quickly make a round so you can see the watch from all sides. There we go. My favorite part, the movement, coming closer to the camera once again, so beautiful. They're really manufacturing art at Lange. Um, this side, maybe I put it the other side around. I don't want you to turn around your devices. The push piece to change, the panorama date, uh, the, the, the big date indication, the big date indication here. The big one, tuk, tuk, tuk. and the push piece to change the time zone. The crown, yeah, maybe the crown is also nice to see. There is written a lange und Söhne on it. Yes, do do do. We see it. This is how the watch looks like. Once again, turning it from all sides to you. So you can see it, the beauty. Voila. There you go. And uh, yeah, thank you very much um, for watching this presentation of the new Lange Eins time zone. I hope I was um, giving you an impression of the watch and I really tried uh, to zoom in and to really get as close as I can to all the details. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, yeah, post your questions and comments underneath. I'm happy to read them and to give you um, answers if you have questions. Stay tuned, recommend our channel, and see you very soon back on the Watch Advisor on YouTube. And for today, I say bye bye now.